Pamela Kaapt. Ayman Enriquez. Christophe uh, Clément. Justin Jonahand. Martin Alexa. Manuela Cirilli. Hey, I'm Mark Dunford. Me Pauline Gagnon. Samir Ferrag. Sandra Chocho. Stephen Goldfarb. Still Eifert. Sarah Strandberg. Valeria Perez Reale. João Pknell. I originate from Algeria, but I left 13 years ago to France. Uh, I worked for a France, French laboratory for the Atlas collaboration for a couple of years. I worked in Norway also, and now I'm working for Britain. I am a postdoc on Atlas. I've been here for two years, so I started summer two years ago. Uh, I work on the pixel detector which is the very innermost piece of Atlas. It's very small. It's almost like a human being in size, in, in, inside of this enormous thing. I'd say Atlas is a huge, gigantic device that is actually like a big microscope. Actually, you build a huge Thing, to see something very, very small and, and tiny, and to go back in time so much. We start first by discovering our apparatus, our experiment, and after that discovering what we know before that it really works like we knew it. To see things that we already know, then we know that the detector works properly. Well, I would hope at the very beginning, I mean, after, after already in the first year, there could be interesting discoveries. I mean, there could be a Z-prime. Z I think the favorite Atlas discovery for everybody is the Higgs. I would like Atlas to give a crucial piece of information to the, the issue of what is the dark matter. I, what do I hope? I hope to see the unexpected. I hope something comes and hits us over the head and we were not looking for it. What I do is in textbooks. And for me, that's the biggest motivation. I just love this work. I love, I love what I do. Because I like the environment so much. I like uh, the collaboration, I like the freedom that I have uh, in my work every day. Oh, I think it's the, it's the curiosity. You wake up and you go like, yeah, today I'm going to find something really cool at work. The most enjoyable is definitely uh, analyzing data. Uh, it's going to have an impact, and a long-lasting impact on, on human beings. Well, maybe when we, we, we brought all our detectors to the pit. 8th of September, when we had the first beam, that was the most exciting moment because we worked so hard for it and we've been waiting so long for it that it must have been the most exciting moment. If, if you went through undergraduate or graduate school in, in physics, that was what you were doing. You were solving problems in different fields and, and you loved that challenge. And I love that challenge. I think it's great when you can try to try to tackle a problem. I guess I try to be systematic. What I liked about physics is that there's nothing to remember. You just understand things and that's all. That's I guess uh, what everybody, all the physicists say. You should be open to, to, uh, to all possible ideas and, and also not just focus on your field. I had a very, very good teacher in physics uh, at high school and the last year of high school she brought us uh, to visit CERN and that were, uh, that's where I clicked in and I decided, uh, well, that might be interesting. From when I was a child, I loved math. <laughs> I loved math. At whatever level I, I, I could do math. You know, my, my life as a, as a young child was, was actually quite typical. It wasn't that somebody said, this person is cut out to be a physicist. I always wanted to do science. To me, it was uh, f from when I was about six, seven, eight years old, I always wanted to know what matter was made of. I never intended to start out in physics. And the reason I ended up in physics was because, you know, in college, in high school, I remember reading the textbook and thinking to myself, 
Okay, they discovered the electron. How exactly do they discover the electron? Um, my mother knew for sure that I was going to be a doctor. Uh, but of course, mothers <laughs> always, always know what's best for you. I, I pretty much knew that I wanted to have a scientific career. Well, I'm playing, playing the piano. I happen to be a fan of horseback riding. I like a lot gardening. When you arrive to the garden, you forget everything. I enjoy hiking a lot. I, I really enjoy uh, sports. My spare time is all dedicated to my kids. I love drawing. Uh, when I came to CERN, I started doing scuba diving. I mean, I have a tendency to just uh, head off to the mountain. You know, I'm not the shopping type. A digital reflex camera. A boat. I would buy a planetarium for my place. Shoes. <laughs> a nice piano. Any type of gear. It doesn't matter what. I would have to say uh, muddy waters. I would love to sit down and talk with muddy waters. Well, okay, uh, maybe I would say something strange like a Buddha or, or maybe the, the, the grand, 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 grand kids. Richard Feynman, who I think has been a myth for uh, most of the people in my generation. Certainly Einstein. Um, Leonardo da Vinci. I would die to meet uh, President Obama. Obama, for instance. Obama, yeah. Einstein, and Einstein was really a, I mean, an extraordinary figure. So recently I took, a, I took a quiz on Facebook that was, are you a geek? And I thought, okay, I should rank pretty high on this. I mean, I can talk Linux operating systems as well as the next physicist in the room. But actually I ranked a one out of 10. I was considered not a geek. I, I have to say I'm a little, I mean, I'm not as geeky as I think as some of my colleagues, but a one? I was a little surprised. And if you call passion geek, yes I am. I think none of them. I'm, I'm both, yeah. I'm clearly both. Neither. <laughs> oh, neither. I think both. I would not call myself uh, either a geek or a nerd. Uh, I, I think I'm a perfectly normal girl. Well, I couldn't be a physicist. I would like to be a musician. Study architecture. I think I would be a teacher. A teacher. I guess I would be a blues fan. I think I would be a computer scientist. <laughs> I cannot imagine that situation. <laughs> Hey, 